you for this introduction. And I also thank the organizers for the uh, invitation to this uh, great place. Yeah, um, let's start with this. So in this talk, I will, will mostly stick to the group GL2QP. And it's about the relation between distribution, distribution algebras of this group, GL2QP, and arithmetic D modules on certain formal models of P1. To get into the mood and to uh, fix some notation, I will start with a small reminder of where the problem comes from. So this is the Balins and Bernstein theorem. So this is, so to speak, the solution of the problem on the Lie algebra level. So um, I will also do this just for GL2. So G is the Lie algebra of GL2 over QP. UG is the universal enveloping algebra. This comes with an augmentation. The augmentation character I call theta. And then I can form a central reduction. I form ug theta. This is simply ug tensored over the center relative to the restriction of theta to the center of ug numbers qp. So this is an algebra on the one hand. On the other hand, I can look at the scheme P1, the projective line over QP, and then the globally defined differential operators on this scheme can be easily written down. I mean, this uh, algebra generated by three generators. So set is an affine coordinate on the P1, so I can view this inside the inside the wide algebra, so z delta, which is the algebra of differential operators of the affine line. And then the group GL2 QP acts on P1. I mean, already also the, I mean, even the algebraic group GL2 acts on P1. I can differentiate the action. I get a map from the Lie algebra G into the differential operators. And the point is, on the central reduction, this is an isomorphism. And it can be made explicit quite easily. So if um, I fix um, basis vectors of the Lie algebra, E, F. Sorry. Oh, thank you. Right. So um, this is E. Then I have toral elements, H1 and um, H2. And then this map actually is given quite explicitly. E is mapped to um, delta. F is mapped to minus set square delta. H1 is mapped to. Um, minus set delta. And then, of course, H2 has to be mapped to set delta. So this gives a, gives a connection between uh, D modules on, the P on P1 and 
representations of the D algebra, which is very tight actually. One has an equivalence of categories between all the modules over this algebra and on the other hand T modules on P1. This is not specific to GL2, no, no. This can be done for any split reductive group over, over QP. So, so this is a for GL2. <coughs> and um, yeah, so going, so going in the other direction, going in one direction is taking global sections and then viewing the global sections of the D module via this first result as a Lie algebra representation. And the other way is a so-called localization functor, which I don't want to go into detail at this point. But what is more important is that if one brings in the G action, then one can write down an equivariant version of this equivalence. So this, this sheaf of differential operators is an equivariant sheaf with respect to the G action on P1. So I can, so I have a subcategory of equivariant D modules on P1. And this is in, this is equivalent to certain representations of G which come equipped with a compatible action of the D algebra. So now, so now let D L A G be the locally analytic distribution algebra of G. And I can again form a central reduction. And since this, Lie algebra, this, since this distribution algebra contains, on the one hand, the group, and on the other hand, the universal enveloping algebra, a module over this reduced algebra is a special case of the module on this left-hand side. And so the question is, natural question is, can one modify the geometric side on this equivalence in a periodic analytic way such that going from right to, to left really is adapted to this subcategory of modules that it really gives locally analytic representations. And maybe there's another functor in the other way around, in the other way that this is an equivalence. So can one, one have a periodic analytic version? this for locally analytic G representations. So by periodic analytic version, I mean on the, on, for example, on the rigid analytic projective line. So, but one soon runs into the following problem. So in the locally analytic representation theory of G, there occur some power series envelopes of this universal enveloping algebra. So if one just takes the rigid analytic P1 with the naive differential operators, one, one will always end up with, with polynomial expressions in the Lie algebra. We'll never get these power series envelopes. So one needs a sheaf of completed, completed differential operators.
But on the other hand, there is a, there is a theory that, that provides completed differential operators. So the idea is to um, approximate the the, the Richard analytic P1 by a sequence of formal models, semi-stable formal models. And use then Bertelow's um, arithmetic differential operators on each of the model. I mean, the link to the P, to the to the analytic P1 then, and this is meant by approximate, is then given by Renault's theorem, which says that the rigid analytic P1 is more or less the same as the collection of all um, formal models up to admissible blow-up. Now, yeah. Um, you mean on the Lie algebra side? Yes, yes. You will get different things on the Lie algebra side. I will come to this, and I will I will um, only deal with a certain sequence of semi-stable models, not with all semi-stable models, and the ones which um, we're working with. Actually, I should have said this um, right away. This is joint work. Joint work with the Pampartel. Matthias Strauch, it's actually at the same time it's still work in progress. So the, the models will be related to um, to certain parts of the Briatitz tree of GL2 and um, the parts actually will be combinatorial balls and the stabilizers of these balls are congruent subgroups. So this gives a link to um, congruent subgroups of GL2 and I will discuss this in the next paragraph. So congruent subgroups. So this works in um, greater generality. So let G be a split reductive affine group scheme. over set P with Lie algebra G. And let M be a natural number greater or equal to 0. Let I be the augmentation ideal, so it's the kernel of the augmentation map. And suppose suppose we fix a, a set of positive roots with respect to a toral maximal toral subscheme acting on the Lie algebra, so fix a triangular decomposition. into a maximal toral subalgebra, the nilpotent radical and then the opposite nilpotent radical. And then fix a Lie algebra basis that consists of individual basis vectors on each of the summits. So x1 to xd. The basis of g. And one can form the following algebra, GM. So as a module, it's a union over n greater or equal to 0 
homomorphisms set P of PMI modulo I times M plus one. So that's the MPD envelope of the coordinate ring relative to the ideal I, modded out by the N plus one filtration step of the MPD filtration. Instead of um, giving more details, down. Is it better? So instead of making it this, this, this precise, I mean, if you don't know what this means, then never mind, because there is a explicit description, which is given. So this is a multi-index. So, according to this choice of basis, there's a, a Poincaré-Birkhoff fit representation of this of this algebra. So it's it's this one. Where the symbols mean the following. So. coefficients are in set P, then this QK up M is the integral part of dividing K by P to the M. And then if I underline it, I, I take products of it corresponding to the components of K and then um, similarly on the on the last factor xk this means x to the k modulo k factorial in case x is nilpotent so in case it comes from the first summit or the third summit or it is a binomial expression x over k in case x is total. And it's easy to see that this is not just a submodule of, um, so I can view this, view this inside the universal enveloping algebra of G at Q, and it's easy to see it's not just a free set P submodule, but it's in fact a free set P algebra. This is because this MPD envelope has a co multiplication by HOM turns into a multiplication. Some examples. So if m is 0, then um, this is just k. So, so this factorial then cancels with the k factorial here. So we get x to the k in the nilpotent case, and um, a polynomial in x in the toral case. So it's easy to see from this that ug0 is just the universal enveloping algebra. And secondly, if m prime is greater or equal to L, then since this MPD ideal is then also an is then also an m prime PD ideal, the universal property of this enveloping algebra gives a homomorphism from UGM to UG M prime. And since all of these algebras are enveloping algebra of the coordinate ring relative to I, the coordinate ring maps into all enveloping algebras. And then dually, they all map into the coordinate ring. So, so, the, inductive, so the inductive limit maps to the construction where we replace the enveloping algebra by the coordinate ring and the MPD ideal by the augmentation ideal. So this is just the algebra of distributions 
on the group scheme G. And in fact, it's easy to see that this is, a, is an isomorphism. And then, of course, one has a natural, a natural um, version of central reduction. So theta, this is just UGM. And that over the center of this algebra. Theta with um, set P. And then one also has completed versions, so this is the periodic completion. Um, and similarly with the theta here, and then finally you had GMQ. This is the periodic completion tensored with Q. Okay, so what has this to do with? Concurrent subgroups. So here's the application. So I let Gn inside my smooth group scheme G be the end concurrent subgroup scheme. So um, points in, in ZP algebras are just the kernel of the reduction. The kernel of the reduction map. And it's uh, very easy to see that the Lie algebra of this um, smooth subscheme is just p to the n times the Lie algebra of G. So it's p to the n times G. And um, what I can do now is the following. These are the rigid analytic groups that will show up when it comes to the, comes to the differential operators. So I let G n 0 be the, the generic fiber. of the formal completion of Gn along the unit element in the special fiber. So this is a rigid analytic group over Qp. So for example, in the case of Gl2, in the case of GL2, then the concurrent subgroup scheme is, is, I mean, it's just the concurrent subgroup, the usual, and um, the CP valued points of GN0 is just 1 plus P to the N and 2 times CP, where MCP inside OCP is the maximal ideal. So it's not a quasi-compact rigid space. It's actually in the GL2 case, it's isomorphic to four copies of the open unit disk. Round zero or whatever. Oh. 
We're interested in the in the in the rigid analytic functions on this group. So these are the holomorphic functions. So for example, in this case, if I take a, an increasing affinoid covering of these open disks by by affinoid disks, I can realize this as a projective limit over Banach algebras. And of course, the, the Lie algebra of the rigid analytic group, but then also of the group scheme, acts on this space via differentiating the translation action. So xf is d modulo dt dxt acting on f for so in the case of GL2 this is just the exponential series for two cross two matrices which will converge if t is sufficiently small enough so this gives me a formal power series with coefficients in this in this um, in the space, and I take the formal derivative, and I take the evaluation at t equals zero. And this implies, if I define xf to be the function, and then evaluate it by the unit element, then I get a map from ug into the linear forms on this space. In fact, even into the continuous linear forms. So this is the continuous stool. Similarly to the distribution algebra in the localytic case, this analytic distribution algebra has a product and is an algebra. I mean, it's very simple. I mean, what's the product of two distributions evaluated on f? That's integrating the function g goes to It's this way around. So integrating the function mu goes to g times f, where this is a translation action. G and zero on C on G and zero. So this is then an algebra homomorphism. And then the first, the first result, which actually was proved in partial cases already by Emerton, is that this map gives an isomorphism of the following algebra, ug dagger q. This is the inductive limit over u hat P N G M Q. We have an algebra isomorphism. Into D on G N zero. So this construction can be used to describe to describe the analytic distribution algebra of a concurrence of a wide open concurrence subgroup. Okay. Now I come to the formal models. P 
one. So let T be the Puyat Hitz tree. of PGL2 QP. So this is a homogeneous tree. I mean, the um, edges that, that come to a, a fixed vertex are in bijection with P1 FP. So in the case P equals 2, it looks like this. So here's an edge, here's an edge, and there you go two edges. So here's a vertex, here's a vertex, here go two edges. It looks like this. Similarly here. The vertices, the vertices are homothetic classes of lattices. So M is a lattice, is a lattice in QP square. So if I have a neighboring vertex V, then this has a representative M prime, which satisfies the inequality. Inequality is like this. And this means that I get a map from M to M modulo M prime. If I identify this with FP to FP, and therefore I get, a, get an FP rational point or a rational point in the special fiber of PM. So, um, so if I have um, PM here, And here's a, a rational point in the special fiber that corresponds to V. And so if I blow up PM in all its rational points in the special fiber for P equals 2, that's three, three points, I get a scheme whose special fiber looks like this. And I can look at the adjacent vertices. They correspond to the smooth points on the end components. If I blow up again in the smooth points, I get a scheme which looks like this. And so on. I can go on like this. So let's call this this x zero v, and then this is x one v, this is x two v, and so on. And I have blow up morphisms going from the higher one to the to the smaller one, and so on. At this point, I have to clean, clean the board.
So in this way, one obtains, um, so generally, xnv is the blow up of xn minus 1 v in xn minus 1 v special fiber smooth points fp. So this is a semi stable scheme. Said P. Um, the, the dual graph, so I mean the graph that prescribes the intersection behavior in the, in the special fiber, is then obviously isomorphic to the ball around x of radius less or equal to n inside T. V? Yeah, thank you. And um, of course, in the, nothing has happened on the generic fiber. So x and v tensor q p is just p one q p. And finally. I mean the group acts on the on the tree, G acts on the tree and for any group element I get an isomorphism from X and V to X and G to the V. So G acting on the tree. <coughs> so in a sense, G acts the, 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 the G acts on the collection of all these semi-stable schemes. Now the next proposition says that it actually suffices to do this for a fixed vertex. So if V0 is the vertex corresponding to the standard lattice, And um, say xn is xn relative to v0, then, um, then first of all, g already acts on the projective limit of these schemes xn. Because any, any ball at any vertex is eventually contained in a, in a ball around V0. So, so this is a co-final family in, in all the XNVs. Then more specifically, the group G0, I mean, I should have said it also from the beginning on. I mean, from now on, I mean, this this is true for the whole paragraph from now on. G is GL2 QP. G0 is GL2 ZP. And um, what else do I need? G, that's the group scheme GL2 over ZP and G0 is the Lie algebra. So then this, this, this group GL2 ZP already acts on each finite level because this can be proved by induction. I mean, X0, G0 acts certainly on X0. That's just P1 um, ZP. And then, and then he, suppose it acts on X to the N minus 1. And it certainly, certainly respects the special fiber. It respects the smooth points. And then because it's formed out of rational points, it also preserves the rational points of the smooth fiber. So by the universal property of blow up, it will then act on xn to the v. 
so for all n. This is one thing. Secondly, the schemes, the congruent schemes, the nth congruent scheme acts also on xn as, as, as a scheme, so one has morphism, so one has a morphism gn. Satisfying the the usual properties. Again, this can be proved by induction. So um, the scheme G0, of course, acts again on the P1 of set P. And then suppose we have an action of, of so G n minus 1 acts on x n minus 1. And then um, look at G n. G n is contained. G n is contained in G n minus 1. And it has the property that this inclusion sends, sends g n the special fiber to 1. So I, if I restrict the g n minus 1 action to g n actually here, then on the special fiber it will act trivial. So it will preserve this blow up locus. And then by the universal property of blow up, it will lift on to x n. So we have this um, level wise action of the g n's. And finally, of course, if I um, if I take the periodic completion, I mean the com the formal completion, the formal completion of x n at p equals zero, then um, this is an this is an admissible, admissible formal um, scheme and and the formal model of of P one rig Q P and then of course the The maps are then so called admissible blow ups. Okay. Okay, now, now I come to finally to the differential operators. So um, I treat the smooth case, I mean the case of x0 and the case of xn, where n is greater than 0 separately. So the smooth case is 0. And the aim is to compute the global sections of the arithmetic differential operators on the x0. So um, in the algebraic x0, has an affine covering, ux, where ux is a spec set px. And um, I have the level m differential operators on x0, I will give a description in local coordinates. I, so I will not define it formally at this point. I will give a description in local coordinates. And um, dx0 hat m is the periodic completion.
And finally, d x0 dagger is the inductive limit over all m. Okay. So in local coordinates, I mean, so the formal completion of x0, this has a covering then by the formal completion of x, ux, and uy. And so I can write write the sections over this affine formal scheme. And these are just series a, k, q, m, k hat with partial x to the k, where a, k is a section of x0 over ux hat. And um, so this goes to 0 for k goes to infinity. Now this is not, this is not good writing. So, so a k is over u x, which is of course just qpx, set px, and it goes to zero for k goes to infinity. Qmk I have already defined, and uh, delta x, delta x is just differentiation with respect to x, and um, delta x k in this case is uh, delta x to the k, or look a faculty. So this is how this sheaf looks like locally. And um, one can do the following now. So g0 acts on x0. And this gives a map from g into the vector fields on x0. And this induces uses the following. So first result, theorem one. So let's call this uh, psi zero. So psi zero induces a map from u g zero. So this is actually should be G0. This is the set P in the algebra. M at Q into D X0 hat on X0 for all M. So the global sections indeed all come from the D algebra as soon as one tensors with Q. This is not true on the integral level. I mean, at least not um, for m greater than 0. And if, I takes, if one takes the inductive limit over all m, then one gets that this algebra is isomorphic to D x0 dagger q 
x0. And I should remark that for m equals 0, so in case where this is just the universal enveloping algebra, then this first isomorphism was already established by adakov watzley And this generalizes this result for arbitrary m. Now in the in the semi stable case so where n is greater than zero, one can do the following. So um, the special fiber of Xn inside Xn, this is a, contains all the singularities, so this is a normal crossing divisor. That means all the singularities are ordinary um, double points. And um, then one has the action of the scheme Gn on Xn. And if one differentiates, one gets a map, which is the analog of psi 0 for n. So from Gn, Cn to the tangent sheaf on Xn. And in fact, one can look at the vector fields, the logarithmic vector fields. In this case, this is just a sub a subsheaf corresponding of all the derivations that preserve the ideal sheaves corresponding to the irreducible components in this um, divisor. And the point is that this map already lands in the subsheaf because um, yeah, because um, I mean, if one if one takes an irreducible component in X n, so so it first of all it acts on the special fiber, and if one takes an irreducible component in there. And this lies over some smooth rational point in um, xn minus 1 as smooth fp. And so this an element in this, say, um, Takes this takes this irreducible component to to the to an irreducible component that that sits over g x, but I mean if I restrict g n, if I restrict the action of g n minus one to g n, then this acts trivial, so one has g x is x, and this implies that g operates already on the component, so someone gets this gets this map. And then there's the second theorem. n and uses this is inclusions. So in this case, one does not get a neat statement like in the smooth case, but one has inclusions of uh, d n, g n zero inside x n dagger q x n inside d on g n prime 0 for n prime the greatest integer less or equal to n times 
p minus 1 over p plus 1. So you see in the case n equals 0, this is n prime is then equal to, I mean n prime is then also 0 and then these become inclusions, uh, these become in fact bijections. So this is the smooth case. In the semi-stable case one has just the sandwich behavior. And I mean it's, this is meant of course in the sense that if p is the blow up map from xn to xn prime, then one has a map from p lower star t xn m to d lower star xn prime m. And this, in fact, is injective if I tensor with q. So that means I can view the global sections of, of xn inside the global sections of dxn prime. And then it makes sense to ask that they lie, in fact, in the subring tng n prime. And that one has this algebra homomorphism lies, of course, on the fact that oxn um, is just oxn prime, because it's a blow up map. OK. And then back to the initial problem. I will be a bit brief here. So um, having computed the global sections, one can do the following. So if one takes the projective limit over all xn as a locally ringed space, and <coughs> pulls back all the d xn to this limit, so pn minus 1 dxn dagger q, where pn is the, is the projection to a factor. Then, I mean, on the limit, the group g acts, and this is then an equivariant sheaf on x. And what one can see is that if m is an equivariant, equivariant d hat module, then its global sections, then global sections over x, this will be a module over the individual global sections of the d xn's, and they will they will um, build up a module structure over locally analytic distribution algebra of G0. And at the same time, one still has a G action on the, on the global section. So this is a module over this pair. But a module over this distribution algebra plus a compatible G action is then a module over the full distribution algebra. So in a sense, here's a space which is somehow related to the rigid P1 and, uh, and a natural sheaf, so to speak, such that any equivariant module has global sections or module over this distribution algebra. Of course, if one wants to talk about locally analytic representations, then one has to take into account topologies. I mean, a locally analytic representation is a module over, over this ring plus certain topological prerequisites. But I have not talked about this here. But, but if one goes carefully goes through all the arguments and keeps track of the topology, then one might eventually put natural conditions on this equivariant module here such that one actually gets on global sections a true locally analytic representation. So um, this is where we are at the moment. And this is my talk. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, uh, in contrast with the uh, uh, Bergenson Bernstein result, in theorem one, mm -hmm. you do not have uh, any central reduction for the enveloping algebra. Can you comment oh. on this?
Yeah, that's a good point. I just forgot. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just forgot. Yeah. And uh, you can ask uh, uh, this result without uh, what kind uh, uh, with uh, what kind of control on the center of, of this unblocking algebra. In Bagginson Gelshine case, one knows that this is says, uh, generated by the Casimir elements, but here. Yeah, for the SL2 case, in the it's, it's, it's generated by the Casimir element in the algebraic setting, and here it should be a power series ring in the Casimir element. Yeah. Thank you. And you're right, it's Yeah, yeah, thank you. This is tensor with Q. It's not true. It's not true on the integral level. It's always injective, but it's not true on the integral level. It has a it has a proper co-kernel. Um, this. Um, Is the theorem one for SL2 case? Yeah, it, it descends to the SL2 case, GL2 case, SL2 case, yeah. 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 But uh, I mean, the, the, the result of Arbakov, what's the most general? It's more, it's more general, yeah. Um, so, it's, it's, so they prove it only for m equals 0, but in fact they will prove it for any reductive split group. So. Um, Um, under the assumption that the prime number is, is good for the root system, or very good for the root system. But for GL2, any prime number is good. Do you, but do you kind of expect to have an equivalence of categories at this function? Um, we're not sure yet. It, 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 it's not, it is not as neat as in the Lie algebra case. So it's not. The, the global sections over all the, the differential operators here, they are actually, I mean, so from this it follows that that the limit n of the um, dxn q dagger xn, this is just a projective limit over the dn gn. But this is uh, this is just a Lie, uh, this is only connected to the Lie algebra. There's no you lose the group action, so to speak. This is the so-called Arens Michael envelope of of Lie. So this is uh, the closure of U G uh, Q P inside inside the distribution algebra. So, uh, so, the, the so the global sections of this sheaf are, are just uh, the closure of the, of the universal envelope in algebra. So, um, um, yeah. So, so, the, so, so if there's a functor in the other direction, it, it just it, it comes not only from tensoring over the global sections with the sheaf. This will give something which is too small, actually. But can you actually, by this construction, obtain some, some representations which say uh, morally not principal series? Locally? Um, we have so far not, not computed examples. So um, it's a good, good time to start with it, but uh, not done it so far. Not <laughs> 